why I focus on neurobiology. Well, it's going to be a lot more than neurobiology, but that's going to be a piece of this, and there's a reason for it, okay? And the reason has to do with some, what some people call adaptive neuroplasticity. How come people know, God, I keep getting in the same trouble again, and I can't get myself out of, this, out of this jam, you know, I don't know what to do. Sometimes it's because uh, there are rather hardwired circuits in the brain that make it difficult for people to make habit changes that really make a difference. And, and so <clears throat> a part of the key to resiliency then uh, is going to be, how do we change this? And I don't mean just changing it for a moment. Yeah, I mean, you can change your serotonin levels for a moment by walking briskly for five minutes. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about more substantial, enduring changes that can make a difference. Now, this is an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, just give you a, a moment to assimilate that. <clears throat> Actually, I just put this up here because I think it's just so crazy. The point that I want to make is <clears throat> some of you know some of this material as well as I do. Uh, some people, however, uh, had it in college or graduate school, and probably since then, uh, there's been evolutionary changes in the brain, probably my case, and some are pretty unfamiliar. But I'm going to try to uh, use plain English. I have a few technical terms, but I'm going to try to make it meaningful. But I'm going to promise you one thing. Every single thing, I mean, this stuff's interesting, okay, I think in general, but every single thing I talk about that has anything to do with the brain is going to come right back and tie directly into real specific strategies that we're going to be talking about. Some this morning, the whole afternoon is going to be devoted to that. So it's, uh, you know, that's why, that's one of the reasons we're doing this. Top-down control. This is just one example, okay? The details are not important here, uh, but this is a part of the frontal lobes, the anterior cingulate. We'll talk about it later on. Uh, the amygdala is in the temporal lobe, and it is enormously important. You may, may very well know this. Enormously important for picking up danger in the environment. 24-7, it's scanning the environment. And how reactive it is, how sensitive it is, is controlled in part by top-down control. So it, it, there are people that are born this way or it develops this way over time where their amygdalas are just too reactive. It's like a smoke alarm screws up and it starts going off even if you blow a candle out on a birthday cake or something. It's like, no, whoa, whoa, it's too, too sensitive. It is controlled largely by the anterior singlet. It's, there's just a pathway, a specific pathway, okay, <clears throat> that goes from here down to here and basically shuts it down. It modulates it. That's top-down control, a higher brain area having direct control over the activity happening in uh, more primitive areas of the brain. <clears throat> 